This is a demo of a round trip workflow between Adobe Premiere and Adobe After Effects CS6. And what we're round tripping is uh, some cinema DNG footage that was shot with a, a Conoscop uh, camera. And um, so I have two s image sequences here of DNG files uh, this one and this one. Uh, both of these sequences were provided by Iconoscope, the Swedish camera manufacturer. And I've already exported this one. What I'm doing is exporting like a small proxy file, although I'm not using the proxy system. Um, and then we're going to edit those in Premiere and then swap them out for the originals. So um, if we just take this one and we're going to add this to the render queue, and we're going to use uh, just some draft settings and I made a little preset called Proxy 1080, and we're going to render this. Okay, so that did take um, about two minutes to render out two seconds of footage. This is uh, 1080p raw footage. Uh, I'm going to switch over now to Premiere. Um, I have already exported this first file and um, put it into a timeline. Uh, so we're going to uh, import the uh, next one and that is going to be this. Take three and we will just drag that one here and you'll notice that we have to go into the motion tab and just scale that up so that it fits. Okay, and so now we have our footage. We have a little composition here. Okay, so I cut these um, two clips into a little sequence here. So if we play it, you know, some of this will, you'll see the same thing twice there. It's like, hey, he was just over there. Now, the objective here is to be able to go back to After Effects and access the Cinema DNG files so that we could um, do the raw interpretation again and actually change things like the white balance and change the color balance and so on uh, not from a baked in file but from the actual raw footage so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to just highlight these right click say replace with After Effects composition and then um, you see we have this um, linked comp here in After Effects and this is our footage just moved from you know linked from Premiere to to After Effects. If we go back to Premiere, you can see here's our linked comp. Now, Premiere will not read Cinema DNG files, so if we substitute in those original files, this link is not going to work. So I'm actually going to uh, Command Z undo that, and so now I'm back to my original, uh, my original sort of fake proxy files. Going back to After Effects, this it doesn't change anything here. So we've just sort of used the link to get into After Effects with these cuts made, but then we've severed that link because we don't need it anymore. And so this, we're actually going to rename this. This is going to become uh, Scene 1. Let's do that because we've done this before. And now what we need to do is to link the these little proxy files to the original uh, DNG sequences. You can see the size of these are seven and you know eight megs. Okay, so here's the trick. This is how we're going to do this. We're going to add a proxy file to it, and typically when you do that, the idea is that the proxy file is a lower resolution file, but that is not set in stone. So what we're going to do is use a higher resolution file as the proxy. And to do that, we're going to go set proxy file, scene one, take one, I'm going to navigate to that. Pick the first DNG file in the sequence, camera raw sequence. We're going to get our importer, our camera raw thing. We did this actually in Lightroom, so we're just going to click through that. And now we have um, we have a proxy. Okay, now why is that jumping, you might ask? Well, the proxy, for some reason, comes in at 30 frames per second as a default, not 25 that the footage was shot in. I, it's probably a preference on my system. I'm on, in an NTSC country, so it's the, probably a set for 30. So what we have to do is we're going to right-click on this and do interpret footage and not main, but now we're going to do interpret footage proxy. And so we're going to just change the frame rate of that proxy to be 25 which should match the original, and now when we switch
proxy, we get a slight scale difference just because one is they're cropped slightly differently, but we don't we're not getting a frame jump. It's actually in the same the time sequence is the same. Okay, so we turn that proxy on. So with this proxy switch, we can actually toggle back and forth between the low res version and the Cinema DNG version, the high res version. One is motion JPEG, and the other is uh, Cinema DNG, basically raw. Okay, so we'll do that with this file. Set proxy file, C1B, take three, go to the first one, click OK on that. There's our raw importer, click OK, and now we need to do the same interpret footage proxy and change that to 25. And now we have a proxy for this. Okay, so we have our proxy version and our non-proxy version. Okay, now this, if we notice down here in the timeline, when we switch these proxies on and off, we're toggling between the QuickTime and the image sequence. So you can see the icons are changing. So how cool is that? We now have automatically substituted in our high resolution um, proxy file, sort of fake proxy file, better quality proxy file. Okay, now here's the trick when rendering this. I'm going to go add this to the render queue. This is really important. We need to select use all proxies in our proxy use uh, tab. I will have to say this is a menu I have never touched before. Um, but by saying use all proxies, it's going to subs it's going to render not the low res QuickTime, but actually the high res DNG file. Double check that. That's all fine. I have this set for ProRes. That's going to be fine for what we're doing right now. And Okay, so that render is finished. It, it looks like it's, um, it took a, a little under five minutes to render about five seconds worth of footage. This is on a not particularly new Mac laptop, so um, I'm sure if I was using a desktop machine, um, it might go faster. All right, so now we're going to hop back over to Premiere, and let's import that file we just rendered. That's this one. And now let's just check our specs on that, 25 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, that all looks good. We're just going to drag this to our timeline. And now if we want to toggle back and forth between our proxy and our real version, we just turn the eyeballs on and off. So here's our real version, here's our proxy. You notice that there's a slight scale difference just because of the way it's cropped. but it's frame accurate, so if we have that on, let's just double check that we don't have any frame jumps. No, nope, we're looking good. And we can actually play, this is ProRes file, 1080, and that seems to be playing fine. Okay, and now here's the cool thing, is that we could actually jump back if we wanted to make additional color corrections or something, we can jump back to our After Effects comp, edit the original, and we jump back into the um, raw importer. And so if for some reason we wanted to change this drastically to something like this, click OK, and then our footage is going to automatically import, and you know we would have to render again. But this is we we have maintained a kind of live connection to the original uh, Cinema DNG file, so that that raw data is still available to us. We have not at this point baked anything in. Okay, so back to Premiere, and there you have it: a live-ish round trip between. Premiere and After Effects, but preserving the ability to tap back into the original raw data and automatically carrying over those edit decisions by using a kind of high-res proxy, a kind of backwards proxy.